We have in our city is the envy of every city in America. Um, when you start in my ward, at the old convention center site, you start marching north with the brand new convention center hotel, the O Street Market, Kelsey Gardens, the United Negro College Fund, you go out to the Noma region, down by the baseball district, across the river to Skyland. Uh, development that will keep the city in good shape financially and otherwise for years to come. The big issues we struggle with still are our education, no question about it. Although we've made important strides in education, particularly in the infrastructure. One of the issues that was always presented to me was how can children learn in buildings that are falling down? So we took that issue off the table. Whether in Ward 3 of Wilson or Ward 7 in Woodson, we have brand new schools all across the city. But we continue to struggle with many of our children who are not receiving the quality education they need that's going to prepare them for the years ahead. And that's something on the council that we'll continue to focus on. Public safety, we've seen dramatic increases in public safety in our city. We just had the lowest homicide rate in the city in the last 48 years. Still too many, but a far cry from where we were the murder capital of the country back in the mid-1990s. Um, we need more police officers on the street. It's something on the council that I've worked on to make sure we fund them so that we can get back to the 4,000 level that I think is important in order to continue to bring down the crime in our city. And the delivery of services, again, the city is a far cry from where it was in the beginning in the 90s where we would go out and celebrate the trimming of a tree. We do things now on, an, on a routine basis, which is very, very important in order to provide the quality of life for all of our citizens. Jobs is the most important issue facing our city today. Our unemployment rate is at an unacceptable level in many parts of the city. And the city government, through our efforts, have put in place many programs, not only job training programs, but mandated hiring programs, so that if the city government is involved in financing a project, that the project must hire DC residents. And the challenge we have is to make sure our residents are trained for the jobs and get the jobs. And we've done a very successful effort, I think, at making that happen. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn the uh, program back over to yourself and answer any questions anybody might have. But again, yes. I want to conclude just by saying it's very important for me to get the endorsement of the Latino community who I've worked with, not only in my 21 years on the council, but as the chairman of the ANC and DuPont Circle back in the late 80s and mid 80s, where Adelina Pena from La Fonde, Mingo Adelina was a great supporter of mine, and we worked so closely together to improve the 17th Street Court. So thank you, and uh, I think I saw somebody. Yes, any uh, questions? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I'm Uh, you see them at the city council, but uh, questions from the floor at this time. Yes. Just a quick question. Thank you. Can you stand up, please? Yes, uh, Councilmember Kathy Henderson. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everyone. We've worked together for many years. Absolutely. Uh, doing an excellent job. Would you please, I was very heartened to read your newsletter about the accomplishments, uh, particularly one of the development companies. Can you remind us the name of that? I think it's Henson Phelps, and tell us why that's so significant. But they're the ones who are working on the convention center hotel. Right. And uh, again, one of, the, uh, one of the things we learned early on, it goes back to the Verizon Center. When we built the Verizon Center, in, in arguably downtown, but the Shaw community, there, there weren't a lot of benefits to the people who lived in the neighborhood. So we were not going to make that mistake again. That was our first large scale project. We weren't going to make that mistake again. So when we started the convention center, we set up a task force that included everyone in the neighborhood and put in place the job training and the life skill programs, which we still run today. Because people are at a lot of different levels. Some people need training in just getting out of bed, and how to dress and how to show up at a job on time. Other people need the skills in order to do the jobs. And so starting with the convention center, we put in place a number of programs. And what culminated from that was the hospitality high school. We actually have a high school now in our city where you can go and when you graduate, you will get a job in the hospitality industry, which is the second largest industry we have in the city uh, after the federal government. Uh, the baseball stadium followed that. And, and it's interesting to hear some people running for office there who do such a bad job. I gotta tell you, the report coming back on the baseball stadium, we met every, every criteria for job hiring for district residents that were on the table. One of the most successful projects we've ever done. Now the convention center hotel follows where we have really integrated the developers, Hansel Phelps and others, with the community to make sure that people who are working building that center of district residence 
and then when the convention center hotel opens, the people employed by the convention center hotel will be district residents. And so that's what we're, uh, we're going to be working toward. Thank you. Uh, we're out of time. We've got to move on into the uh, other candidates. So I'm sorry we've got to move on into okay. the uh, candidates. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for having me today. I really appreciate it. And, uh, thank you for your service to our city all these years. I've loved it. After 21 years, I can't have you. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to be moving on into the uh, next panel. We're, we're running out of uh, sorry, we want to make sure, so the next panelist, please step up, and I'm sorry we can't take any more questions. Thank you. Okay, we're, uh, we're getting uh, uh, number four, uh, board four, which is a really tough race in board four. We've got some great candidates, and all board four candidates, please uh, come up. Nice to see you as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a union lawyer, 
and I have been a uh, community and worker empowerment fighter for many, many years. And what that means is I've represented people as an AFC commissioner, as a shop steward uh, for my union, uh, found out their concerns, stayed in touch, and followed through for solutions to get things done that benefited them all throughout the time that I represented them. And I believe we need that type of consistent, responsive leadership to stand up for all parts of our ward all the time, every month, every week, in every neighborhood, not just in election time. We have to stay connected with all four, all ward four neighborhoods and follow through on commitments that advance residents' lives. Um, I will uh, answer the question, I think that's 30 seconds, so let me answer the question. I, as I say, I'm a uh, United Food and Commercial Workers International Union lawyer on the union's legal department. Uh, as a union lawyer, we I have worked on um, many issues, uh, including being uh, the plaint we're plaintiffs uh, in the uh, in the lawsuits against the Arizona and Alabama severely uh, anti-immigrant laws because we believe they're unconstitutional and uh, we believe that they um, place fear in people unnecessarily, uh, stopping people, and it's a violation of the First Amendment, uh, the violation of the right to travel, and a violation of the 14th Amendment. And so,